Hello again, guys. Um, today we are going to be looking at light in, a, in more detail. Uh, last week we were looking at the relationship between power and energy, what power is and what energy is. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and energy. I've drawn a, a little picture here. And it's a picture of uh, some waves and the waves have different wavelengths and different frequencies and uh, I'm going to explain what these are. So first of all let's look at what wavelength is. So let's look at the, the red wave here. Now that's one wave. right? Now think about a C wave, right? You, would ca you could count it from the top of one wave, the crest of one wave, to the crest of the next wave. I haven't actually shown the crest of the next wave here. But that would be one wavelength. Another way you can measure wavelength is by counting the nodes, right, and um, halving the number of nodes. So there's one node here. A node is zero point, okay? So there's a zero point here, that's called a node. This is a zero point here, that's a node. And this is a zero point here. So we have one, two nodes. So if we half it, we know that that, that distance is one wave length. Right? So if we look at the red line I've drawn here, uh, that corresponds to the red wave, of course and that's one wave length. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, the green line. Here's the green line here. Let's see how many waves it is. Right. Count the nodes. One node, two node, three nodes, four nodes and half of it. So we know that's actually two waves there. right? So we know it's two waves. So, so therefore from here to here is one wave and from here to here is another wave. This, so from here to here is one wave here. So let's just write that. From This is one wavelength. Okay, now let's look at the blue line. Here's the blue line here. So let's count how many waves there are by counting the number of nodes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And half of eight is four. So we know that there are four wavelengths here. Right? So if we only go a quarter of the way along, from here to here, that must be one wavelength. Yes, one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths, four wavelengths. Right? So, so a, a good way to remember that is just to look at the shape of the wave, and it makes an, an S shape, and an S shape means it's, it's one wave. Okay, right? If it's only a, an upside down U or a U shape, you know it's half a wave. Right? So from here to here is one wave. Right? And we're going to just one wave. Okay, I just have to write it like that because I can't fit it in. Okay. So the unit of a wavelength is like the unit of any length, yeah? And we measure length. We can measure it in kilometers, uh, measure it in meters, centimeters, millimeters, micrometers, yeah? Um, the standardized unit, is, though, is the meter. Okay, the standardized unit is the meter. Okay, so that's wave length for you. Now let's have a look at what frequency is. Frequency is the number of waves per second, right? Or um, Another way to say waves per second is cycles per second. So let's write down that. Uh, cycles per second. 
So whether it's waves per second or cycles per second, it's the same thing. And the unit for that is the hertz. So to demonstrate to you what frequency is, let's call the whole length of this graph, yeah, let's call the whole length one second. So let's start counting how many waves or how many cycles there are per second. So the red wave, there is one wave, so therefore it has a frequency of one hertz. The green wave, there's the green wave, one, two, so it's two cycles every second, because it's two cycles per second. The green wave has a frequency of two hertz. Now let's have a look at the blue wave. The blue wave, one, two, three, four. Um, so there are four waves in one second, so therefore it has a frequency of four hertz or four cycles per second. So just to recap, um, let me just move this here. Let's move it down there. Um, the red wave, there's only one wave. So that's one hertz, one hertz. Yeah. There are two waves in one second with the green wave. That's two hertz. And there are three waves in one, sorry, there are four waves in one second with the blue wave. So that's four hertz. Sorry, I, I should have used a different color for, for each one. But I, I think you can, you can see what I'm getting at here. So let's go back to the original statement. The shorter the wave, the higher the frequency. Or let's put it the other way around. The longer wa the wave, the lower the frequency. So we say that the wave and the frequency are inversely proportional to each other. So the shorter the wave, the higher the frequency. So let's have a quick look to make sure that that's true. Let's have a look at the, the very short wave here. The very short wave here is the blue one. The blue one has four waves per second, which is four hertz. Right? Then let's have a look at the green line here. The green line here, that's longer than the blue line. Yeah? But e even though it's longer than the blue line, yeah, its frequency is less than the blue line. It only has two hertz. And if we look at the, the red line here, yeah, so it's, that's the longest line, isn't it? Yeah? Uh, the red line. But if you look at the red line, it's one wave per second here, yeah, which is one hertz. So this statement holds true. The shorter the wavelength, yeah, the higher the frequency. OK, let's uh, clear away some of this stuff, because now I want to demonstrate that the higher the frequency, the, the, the higher the energy. OK, the relationship between a wavelength and frequency might hold true for um, a rope wave uh, exactly in the same way as it holds true for a light or electromagnetic waves. But unfortunately, when we're talking about the relationship between energy and frequency, the reason for this relationship is quite different for rope waves compared to electromagnetic waves. What I'm saying is, we can't really use a, a piece of rope as an analogy for the properties of light when we're talking about the relationship between frequency and energy. I think it was a, a physicist called Max Planck who first came up with the reason why an electromagnetic wave, for example, like light, has more energy if it has a higher frequency. And this equ equation on the left here, E equals HV, is actually called 
Planck's constant. And if we have a look at the equation, uh, we can see that uh, if we increase the frequency v, right, then we're also going to increase e as well. h is uh, Planck's constant. Now, electromagnetic waves can be created in different ways, but we're going to have a look at w one way here. If an atom uh, absorbs uh, an enough energy, it is possible that it can uh, re-emit this energy as a, a photon, as light. And I'm just going to explain that method now. If this is the atom here, and I've put circles around to show the different energy shells. Now, the, the bigger the number, the more energy the shell has. Now, if we were to energize this atom, perhaps an electron on one of the shells yeah, would jump to an outer shell. And when the electron jumps to an outer shell, it has more energy. But it's not really happy being out on this outer shell if it's jumped out there. And generally, it wants, you know, it doesn't feel stable and it wants to jump back again. And uh, quite soon uh, after it's it's jumped out, it will actually jump back again. And when it jumps back again, because it has more energy in shell number two than shell number one, uh, then it has to lose some of that energy. And it loses that energy in uh, the form of a photon, uh, as I've shown here by the red squiggle. Now, according to Max Planck, uh, he's the guy who came up with this formula here, Max Planck says that the more energy that the electron releases as a photon will determine the, the photon's color or the photon's frequency. And he said that the, the larger the energy difference between the, the two shells, then the higher the frequency, because more energy will be emitted by the electron once it falls back down to its lower shell again. So just to repeat, the, uh, the bigger the difference between the energy levels, the more energy the electron is going to lose, which means the photon emitted will have more energy, and photons with more energy have uh, a higher frequency. Okay, that's probably um, as much as you need to know at th at this stage. Maybe later on, if uh, if there's a little bit of time, I'll explain a little bit more about the relationship between uh, frequency and energy. Okay.